Hi there, and welcome to the Queen's Terminal, Terminal 2, here at London Heathrow Airport. A few moments ago, I landed here on an Air Canada flight from Toronto, and now I'm connecting on to my third flight of this itinerary. I was originally meant to fly from here directly to Brussels, but that Brussels Airlines flight was cancelled, so Air Canada automatically rerouted me via Geneva. I had yet to fly on one of Swiss's A220 300s, so I was happy enough for the switch. We landed in the satellite terminal, which is where all of the intercontinental flights are found, and now need to head underground to the main part of the terminal, which is quite a walk, but there are moving walkways. Heathrow has four terminals in operation, five, three, four, and two, where we are now. In order to go through the transfer security, I needed to go back to the main terminal, even though my plan was to walk straight back out to the satellite for a better lounge. The transit security check here is very easy, and even though I didn't have my onwards boarding pass, they let me through into the terminal by showing just my itinerary. Once through, I headed to the transfer desk to pick up my next two boarding passes. Before we properly head into the terminal, let me welcome any of you that are new to the channel. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket, and the price that I paid is in the description below, as always. Swiss had no knowledge I'd be filming today, and I didn't receive any compensation from them. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my unique experience. The rest, I'll let it speak for itself. Let's get started. Terminal 2 is the Heathrow home of the Star Alliance, plus Aer Lingus for some reason. Lufthansa is one of the founding members of the Star Alliance, and they own Swiss, just the airline, so here we are. If you have a business class ticket on any Star Alliance carrier, you'd be entitled to enter one of four lounges here, Lufthansa, United, Singapore, or Air Canada. Can you guess which one I'm heading to now? I feel pretty confident in saying I can guarantee that you've guessed wrong. I had read some great things about the United Club here, so that's where I'm heading now. Plus, I heard that they have nicer shower suites as well. That being said, still writing this right now, I am surprised that I didn't go to the Singapore Lounge. Note that if you want to go to the satellite terminal and need to come back to the main terminal like me, in the reverse direction, there are no moving walkways. Swiss has been around just since 2002, kinda. Swiss Air, not to be confused with Swiss, went bankrupt in 2002. That same year, their regional subsidiary, Crossair, transitioned to a new full-service carrier, Swiss. Swiss's IATA code, LX, is the carryover from Crossair, though they took Swiss Air's ICAO code in order to preserve their international traffic rights. In 2005, the Lufthansa Group announced their intention to acquire Swiss and began with a small minority stake, taking complete control by the end of 2007. The year after, Swiss acquired Edelweiss Air, and not much has changed in a good way since then. While the majority of the terminal's amenities are in the main building, both share the same design language and everything is laid out in a way that makes navigation pretty easy. And here we are at the United Club. First thing I did was get a nice shower suite, which was much nicer than I expected. And I love the bench to be able to open your bag easily. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to balance my suitcase on top of a sink. automatic faucet, which just wouldn't cooperate. The lounge itself is one large room with benches and partitions dividing up the space. It was crowded while I was there, but there were still plenty of seats available, though not the prime window side seats. There's a large centerpiece bar and a really nice buffet tucked away on one side. Overall, it was in fact a very nice lounge, more modern than I was expecting, and a nice selection of food, 
but it did get even more crowded so I decided to trek back to the main building and spend the rest of the time with Lufthansa. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are really the easiest ways, all free for you, to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. I do have two Egypt Air reviews coming up in April. One of them was quite the doozy. And here is the Lufthansa Lounge. Last time I was here, I showed you the Senator Lounge behind it, so this time I'll just focus up front. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces, like links to other business class reviews that I think you might enjoy. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. This was interesting. I don't think I've ever seen an airport publish their statistics like this before. Some of them are surprisingly impressive, borderline hard to believe. Most of the terminal is filled with natural light and beautiful views of the aircraft parked at the gates, except for the gate that we parked at today. Not to worry though, because our twin going to Zurich was just next door. Swiss A220s really are just beautiful birds. Swiss's fleet at the moment is kind of a mixed bag with 88 aircraft in total and 20 on order. Of that, 30 of them are A220s. Boarding began around 10 minutes behind schedule, but was quick from that point on. As we walk down the jet bridge maze, let's take a look at this afternoon's flight stats. Stepping on board, I was greeted by the purser and quickly found my seat, which was technically 3 Charlie, but I sat in 3 Alpha. This is Euro business class. The seats are the same as economy, but normally the center seat is left open. In this case, since the layout is 3-2, on this side, you get both seats to yourself. 3C was the only seat left on this side when my flights were changed. If you do do what I did, I would suggest not reclining your seat during the flight when sitting in the wrong seat, since the person behind you may have booked that seat specifically to avoid having someone in front of them. Just my two cents. Anyway, I just love Swiss stuff. Is there a lot of legroom? No. Are these probably the most beautiful design short haul economy seats on the market? Yeah. They're just so smart looking. Bottles of water and wet wipes were passed around, and the safety video began on the teeny tiny overhead screens. Just next to that was the overhead air vents as well. 
Because turbulence can occur in water, position yourself as shown on the screen. You may use either position. In case of an evacuation, What's that saying? Birds of a feather flew together. We headed to the runway as the sun was starting to hang low, and I got some more beautiful shots of our twin going to Zurich. The spool up, take off, and airport stats are coming up next. It was a little bit cloudy, a little bit hazy, but still had some nice views as we climbed to our cruising altitude. Soon enough, we were crossing the English Channel, France way out in the distance. Swiss offers complimentary service for business class and has a buy on board service for economy. I started out with a much needed and refreshing beer and then was served a really tasty little meal. I posted about this on my community page a while back and I asked what the name of it was. We're looking at the thing behind the sliced beets. It was essentially shredded creamed beef on the bottom, topped with some sort of horseradish cream and mustard. The responses I got were a, a little bit all over the place, from shepherd's pie to beef tartare to cat food. Charming. Two people mentioned that it could be Bunderfleisch, which I thought it might be, but I think they thought the beet slices on top were actually the meat that I was speaking about. Anyway, if you think you know what this is called, the part of it with the mustard seeds on top, please let me know in the comments. Whatever it was, it was delicious. For dessert, it was, I believe, an apricot or a similar mousse with chocolate. After meal service, the crew, of course, came around with chocolates in both cabins. The bathrooms were fresh and clean, and I love the layout on the A220s. Also love the products that Swiss uses, Soder's brand Herbal Scent, which kind of pleasantly smacks you in the face. Soon enough, we're in final descent into Geneva. It was pitch black outside and the lights were kept on inside until the last minute, so this is a pretty short clip.
The landing and airport stats are coming up soon. I'll just mention quickly about the service. Since this flight, I've flown on Swiss two more times. That makes it five flights since I started the channel. And my conclusion thus far is, they're becoming my second most consistent airline. I'm not saying the best, but just consistently pleasant, professional, friendly, and always good food. Swiss is meant to be the premium brand of the Lufthansa Group, and the crews at least do seem to act the part. And that is that. I needed to walk the length of the airport and enter Switzerland so I could transit to my next flight on Brussels Airlines up to Brussels. Geneva is not really Swiss's big transfer hub, and when I asked someone which line I needed to be in for transit, they looked at me like I had two heads. When I said I'm going to Brussels, from London, that turned into three heads. It is a pretty cool looking terminal though. And that'll do it for today. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on board that connecting flight that I just mentioned. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.